the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. As we gather today to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first call to mind our sins, and let us ask God for his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite in heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourself in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand there idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you two go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. It certainly seemed like the workers who spent the entire day in the vineyard had a point. It didn't seem just for them to receive the same pay as those who only worked the last few hours. After all, they were out in the sun all day, while those other guys only worked 
those last few hours of the afternoon. But the owner of the vineyard also had a point. He had made an agreement with each group as he called them to work in the vineyard. He did not violate his agreement with the first group by being so generous to the last. Nor was the Lord being unfair to his closest followers when he promised to the man dying on the cross next to him, the man we call Dismas, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Dismas didn't follow the Lord throughout Galilee and Judea. He didn't leave his family and friends behind. He didn't sleep outside when lodging could not be found. Instead, Dismas was busy stealing from other people. While Jesus' first followers were striving to be the best they could be, Dismas was refining his skills as a thief. Was it fair that he should be rewarded with heaven when all he did was make a profession of faith in the moments before his death. Well, in God's justice, yes, it was fair. God's gracious gift to Dismas did not replace the gifts he offered those who followed him from the very beginning of his ministry. He might have been just minutes from his death, but it was not too late for Dismas. Thank God it is never too late with our Lord. This gospel reading applies to each of us, I think in two different ways. First of all, it tells us to respect the initial call that the Lord gives each of us. Some of us receive that call shortly after our birth. And that is the great gift of parents who are determined that their infants and children share in the life of Christ that is at the heart of any Christian family. Some are first called to the Lord at other times in their lives. That call could be due to anything from a crisis situation where people realize they really need God, to a simple inner longing for a happiness that they realize this world cannot give. The call itself is grace. The Lord gives it to us in many ways at many times during our lives. Sometimes we are shocked to learn that others who have behaved one way have now turned to the Lord. We may know of someone who has been hostile or sarcastic to all who went to church, and now there is that person in the pew in front of you praying fervently, looking to be active in the church that he or she once mocked. We might see someone whom we know who has been involved in rather shady dealings. Maybe it's a person who has destroyed his or her family through infidelity. Or maybe it's a person who flaunted morality with drugs or with brushes with the law. And now they are here in person in the church. And more than that, there is that person taking an active role in ministry even perhaps leading a ministry with us. And we ask, how can that person all of a sudden become so spiritual? Well, the answer to that question is grace. He or she knows what they have done that is wrong, and he or she may be the first to say that his or her formal lifestyle was unacceptable. And they also thank God that it was not too late for them to go into the fields and work for the Lord. Sometimes we sing about this, 
when we sing that old hymn, Amazing Grace. St. Augustine, early life was anything but sad, saintly. And to say that he was immoral was rather an understatement. But he too responded to grace. It was not too late for him to work for the Lord. And it's also important that we remember that St. Augustine and others who answer the call for the Lord wish they had not wasted so much of their lives. St. Augustine wrote, Late have I loved thee, O beauty, ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved thee. He knew how much time of his life he had wasted. He knew how many people he had hurt. He knew how bad he had been. And he knew how much good he could have accomplished if only he had responded to God's grace earlier. The grace was there for him. He was just ignoring it as he went through his life. But still, he eventually turned to God, and he did become one of the greatest leaders of our church's history. Now, what if the people of Augustine's time decided that he had nothing to offer to the church, that he was a known sinner and should not be taken seriously? What if they had decided that it was too late to take Augustine into their fold? They and we would have missed profiting from his many gifts. What if we were to do the same thing here? What if we were to exclude someone from our community because of that person's past? If we were to do that, we would miss that person's gifts to our community that God had given them to help us. This applies not only to those who join the church, but also those who perhaps return to the faith after having fallen away, maybe sometimes for many years. And here is the second way that the gospel parable applies to us. Christ continually calls us to himself. Salvation is a process, not a one-time event. All of us have had times in our lives when we have not been as committed to God as perhaps we should. And worse, there may have been times in our lives when we have out and out rejected Him. There are times of sin. But the Lord has not rejected us. It is never too late with our Lord. And like the landowner in our gospel, the Lord continually goes into the marketplaces of our lives and calls us to come and work in his vineyard. It is never too late to do the Lord's work, never too late for those joining the faith, never too late for those returning to the faith and never too late for you or me to strengthen our witness to God. So is God unjust for rewarding those who have worked only a short time in the field? No. Is he unjust when he calls us to turn from sin, return to him, and get back to his work? Again, no. It is never too late. And thanks be to God that it is never too late. Amen. Together, let us now stand and proudly profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible 
and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence, we offer our needs, our prayers to our loving Father. For the church, May we give witness to the gospel of Christ as we welcome all we encounter with generosity and mercy. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations, may they place the dignity of human life at the center of all their policies, programs, and decisions. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering from the coronavirus throughout the world, may our all-powerful Father help us overcome this deadly pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For all men and women, may we recognize that we have a loving God who will treat us generously no matter how late in our lives we come to him. We pray to the Lord. For catechists who have taken on the task of working in the vineyard to pass on knowledge of our faith, may they know our gratitude and be rewarded abundantly for their efforts. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, as we begin 40 Days for Life this week, May we receive a new appreciation of the gift of life and share it with others. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions that people wish to have remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For our deceased loved ones, and especially at this Mass, for Emmeline and Ellie Richard. May all those who died in the hope of the Kingdom of Heaven be purified by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. And we pray in a special way for our seminarians as they begin another year of studies to the priesthood, for all of those preparing for a vocation of leadership within our church. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, be attentive to our needs, our prayers this day, and as always, answer them according to your holy will. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Holy Martyrs, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace without touching. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Thanks. Amen. Today is a Catechetical Sunday, and we'll be offering a special blessing for our catechists at the 11 o'clock Mass tomorrow. But please keep them in your prayers. They have such a special mission and work within the context of our parish here of the Cathedral of St. Joseph and all parishes to be able to teach our faith to yet another generation of young people. That is the way our faith continues in life from one generation to the next. So let us not take them for granted. And if you see one, please thank them for their service to our church and to the future of our church. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us this evening. Enjoy this beautiful weather. We'll see you next week.